Welcome to the final event of the Practicing Solidarity live stream. This is the Fashion Fiction's World Remix Workshop. So we're working from a Zoom room um, and we have some participants here ready to go, which is wonderful. Um, and I know that there will also be people watching on the live stream. Uh, the workshop lasts for 90 minutes. I'm Amy and I'm hosting it. And in the room, we also have Sally, Beth and Henny, who are uh, all helping to make the workshop happen. Uh, so yeah, this is an interactive session. We're going to ask you to get involved in various activities, though you can drop in and out as you wish. Um, you can have a more interactive experience if you come into the Zoom room and you'd be very welcome to do that. Um, Henny is putting the link in the live stream chat. Uh, so yeah, if you'd like to join, just, just pop in. Um, but yeah, you can also participate just via the live stream if you prefer, um, and we'll explain and take you through, through that as we go. Um, one little bit of housekeeping for those in the Zoom room. We request that you keep your mics muted unless we're at a point where we're opening up for discussion. Uh, you're welcome to keep your cameras on, but bear in mind that you will appear on the live stream if you do that. So if you don't want to be in the live stream, just keep your camera off. Um, we've got various short videos to show as part of the workshop. Um, and when we show them, it's good if we can all turn off our cameras um, and try not to write in the Zoom chat at that point. Um, and we'll remind you as we go along. So to get started, we're going to show our first video which is an introduction to the Fashion Fictions project. So let's all turn our cameras off um, and Beth will show us the first video. Thank you. Fashion Fictions brings people together to generate, experience and reflect on engaging fictional visions of alternative fashion cultures and systems. I'm Amy Twigger-Holroyd, Associate Professor of Fashion and Sustainability at Nottingham Trent University in the UK. I founded the project in 2020 and it has already involved hundreds of participants all over the world. There are many problems associated with the way that we commonly use clothes today, particularly in the Global North. Negative environmental and social impacts are generated from production through to use and disposal. These problems are made worse by the ever-increasing volumes of garments being produced by an industry driven by economic growth. The project aims to support transitions towards sustainable, post-growth fashion systems. It acknowledges the huge reduction in resource use that will be needed if we are to work within ecological limits. Such systems will involve different social and cultural norms, different economies, different ways of living with our clothes. It can sometimes be hard to imagine alternatives that are radically different because the status quo feels so entrenched. The project creates a safe space to explore the many possibilities of what alternative fashion systems might look like. It allows us to pause and ask ourselves, what do we wish for? To do this, we imagine contemporary realities in parallel worlds worlds that have split off from our own at some point in history and taken a different path. We try to imagine positive and enticing worlds in terms of individual satisfaction, social justice and sustainability. We imagine worlds that are physically possible but push beyond what feels plausible to us today. A three-stage structure supports this imagining. At stage one, we write 100 word outlines of fictional fashion worlds. At stage two, we build on these outlines, creating visual and material prototypes. At stage three, we step into the worlds, finding ways to enact what life is like there and reflect on these experiences. Fashion Fictions has an ethos of openness and thrives on plurality. Everyone is invited to get involved. Please join us in exploring alternative worlds and imagining how fashion might be otherwise. Great, thanks Beth. Okay, so that's given you an idea of the project as a whole. Um, and in this workshop, we're focusing on stage one. So we're creating new written fictions, which are just 100 words long. 
Um, I'll be guiding you through the workshop using various short videos and resources that we'll share on the screen. Um, and we'll also share some uh, relevant links in the Zoom room chat for those who are in here um, and in the live stream chat as well for anyone following the live stream. So one key resource that you'll need access to is the Fashion Fictions website, which Henny is putting in the chat now. Thank you, Henny. Um, and also a shared Google Doc, which we'll be using collectively to document our ideas. Um, we'll share that link shortly. But first, let's have a look at the next video, which is going to explain the format of a stage one fiction and introduce the central task of today's workshop. So let's turn our videos off again. In this workshop, we're aiming to produce new 100 word fictions, which can be contributed to the project. Here, I'm using the Fashion Fictions website to show you what one of these fictions looks like. So I'll go to the Worlds page, which gathers together all of the fictions submitted so far. We have an amazing 167 worlds at the moment. So on this page for each world, you see a brief summary of the fiction. I'm going to go down to world 46, which is one that I wrote. Uh, it's a world in which a city is famous for its network of municipal clothes libraries. So this is the world itself, the fiction, which is 100 words long. So yeah, it describes a fictional fashion world, in this case, focusing on a city which has a network of landmark clothes libraries which are widely used by local residents. We find out that the city is internationally renowned for its sartorial style and its minimal fashion related carbon footprint. And also at the beginning, you see that there's an indication of the backstory of this world, how it developed differently to our own. In this case, it's because an eccentric fashion figure left a huge sum of money in their will to set up this initiative. On the world page, you also have a few bits of extra information. So you have the overall what if of the fiction. In this case, what if borrowing rather than owning clothes was the norm. The real world issue that the fiction targets is identified. Heaving wardrobes full of unworn clothes. As well as inspiration for the fiction, which for this one was both clothing rental services and just libraries being brilliant. And then we see who contributed it. In this case, me. Um, you can choose to be anonymous. Sometimes people do that. Um, and every fiction has a Creative Commons license attached to it, which means that others can adapt and remix the work as long as the original author is credited. And this is part of the open and collaborative ethos of the whole Fashion Fictions project. So we're going to be using that idea of adapting and remixing in today's workshop because we're aiming to generate new fictions, but not by starting from a blank page. Rather, we're going to draw on the dozens of fictions already here on the website to come up with remixed versions. So it's a sort of asynchronous uh, mass collaboration, an act of collective imagination. Brilliant. OK, um, so the first thing that we're going to do is to look at the topics explored in the world submitted so far using a map that I've created from my analysis of the first 120 fictions. So this is something that I did um, a while ago, about six, eight months ago. Uh, yeah, when there was 120 fictions and I uh, did a bit of a... Uh, a bit, a deep analysis of all of these fictions and the ideas and the topics that were kind of um, embedded in them. Uh, so Henny will put the link to the map in the chat right now. So you can open it up yourself. Um, you might need to zoom in, there's some quite small text. So I'm going to show it on the screen as well um, to show you. So. So yeah, this is so this is a map of, of the, the 
topics and the themes that came out of my analysis of these um, first 120 worlds. Um, I've divided them into groups, um, which sort of represent very different dimensions of life, society, fashion, that the topics relate to. So um, at the top right, we have the clothes themselves. What are the clothes like in these fictional worlds? And different aspects of that. Um, then manufacture, how clothes are made, how they're consumed. A group that's about reuse. One that's about the end of life. So when clothes can't be reused as clothes anymore. Um, one about washing. Those are all kind of quite uh, focused on the garments themselves and how they're kind of produced and used and, and disposed of. Then there's a couple of groups which are about spaces. So where geographically uh, sort of things happen. Um, people who are involved in these fictions, people and organizations. Um, I'll go back up to the top and look on the left. Let's just zoom in a little bit to help you see. Um, the skills and knowledge that is um, explored in the fictions ideas of embodiment, anything to do with bodies. A really big group, which I've called cultures, so different aspects of, in the fictions, really about um, ways of people uh, connecting together and aspects of human culture. And then there's also a group which is specifically about fashion and kind of how fashion plays out in these worlds. And then um, going even more broadly, uh, fictions that focus on um, themes around nature, themes around economics and law, and then global issues. So within each one of these, um, these groups are um, uh, different, more specific topics, uh, kind of more categories, I suppose. Um, and I've included in, in each, the name of each one, uh, some uh, examples of the kind of topics that appear within the groups, just to give you a little bit of context. So, for example, no material clothes topic includes people thinking about nudity, where they're imagining worlds where there aren't any clothes, um, but also uh, worlds which are about um, digital dress rather than or in combination with physical dress um, and so on. So, yeah, the examples are there to give you a sense of kind of what these short headings are are referring to. Um, but the, the size of the text for each of these groups reflects how frequently they're mentioned in the fictions. Um, so there are many, many fictions that discuss repair and alteration. But if we look below that, not so many um, that talk about disposal or beyond disposal, kind of thinking about um, how fibres are used after the, the garments have been uh, disposed of, um, and even fewer that say anything about washing. So that's a, to some extent, a bit of a blind spot. Um, and then next to each of the, uh, to many of the groups are the numbers of some of the worlds that have this topic as a central part of their what if. Um, so what I'd really like you to think about is looking at this uh, map as a whole, if I just zoom out again, um, I found it really helpful to create this, to get a sense of what we are collectively imagining and what we're collectively discussing and focusing on when we're doing our imagining. Um, and I'm really interested in what's there, but I'm also really interested in what's not there. And if we see the creation of this body of fictions as a kind of collective act of imagination, um, where we're asking ourselves, what do we wish for together? What, what do we want to think about? I feel like there are probably some, some topics, some issues, some ideas, which maybe haven't been explored as much as they might. They might uh, and there might be areas that we'd like to focus on more. Um, so my questions are, um, what important ideas or aspects of the fashion system are missing or underrepresented in this map? Um, what would you like to see more of in this collectively produced body of work? So I'll stop sharing so you have access to it um, via the link in the chat. Um, we can discuss this in the Zoom room. 
Um, but we'd also like to gather everyone's thoughts jotted down in writing in the Google Doc. So Penny is putting the link to the Google Doc in the chat now, and I'll just show you on the screen what it looks like. So, so here I am. Um, so we're on. We're doing step one. Um, you'll see the questions are there. What important ideas or aspects of the fashion system are missing or underrepresented? What would you like to see more of in this body of work? So the plan is that we all can just write into this document and make a shared list um, here. Um, so, for example, Sally, you can help me out here. Um, I wonder if you have identified a gap in the map that you might want to um, highlight. Yeah, well, I, I think I've taken a um, from, from, from what you said, but I'm back in the sort of bottom right hand side where it's the, the stuff that's about end of life and washing. Um, I think are interesting that there's not a great deal about those things. Um, I suppose the washing one in particular, I was thinking about um, how that might change clothes. So if we wash things less, how might we how might the clothes themselves change? So would they be looser fitting? Would you know what what would evolve out of that? And I don't think that was captured. Um, and also on the end of life one, I was thinking, well, what is the end of life for clothes? Like how yeah, if you can if you can alter and adapt and use them in different ways, when does that end actually come for them? And what practices happen along the way before before they reach that? Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose I should have a kind of disclaimer that the the popularity, if you like, of these different dimensions could, to some extent, be down to my coding of what people are talking about. So, um, in a way, it's quite nice that there's so much about repair and alteration because we're that's presumably a suggestion that we can keep reusing a lot of things for a long time, so they don't even get to the end of a life. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of um, Everything has to be taken with a pinch of salt for that, for that sort of reason, I think. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, I'll press something like that. Um, and it would be really nice to hear from anyone else in the room who has any initial thoughts about what's not there. Barbara. Barbara has been a long standing friend <laughs> of fashion fictions and was there at the very first um, workshop. So maybe it's interesting for you to Hello. see how this is. Yeah, it is very there. interesting to see. Um, see this, yes, and I come back because it's so interesting. Mm -hmm. um, just glancing through it, I can't see anything on the presentation of clothes, like how they're displayed. There's presentation and display. Is that a missing? There, there's, um, there's some things about um, places under, like under spaces or places. Um, there's things about kind of catwalks there's very little about shops to be honest there's yeah. very little about the kind of um any kind of selling like of clothes people mannequins and, and and hangers and the way that they yeah. are, clothes are yeah displayed for sale or for viewing of some kind yeah no it's there's very there's a, there's, there's a lovely fiction which is about people displaying clothes um like displaying their wardrobe as a sort of um, attractive display in itself. Like it becomes an architectural feature, the display of your clothes within the home. Uh, but no, like very little about, um, uh, yeah, very little about the, 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 the selling of clothes, to be honest. There's a lot about um, spaces for, for making and altering. Um, very little about kind of advertising or, um, yeah, kind of promotion. No, I definitely think that's a gap. So yeah, yeah. I mean, yep, there's one I can see marketing on one. So no, no advertising surprises me, or one advertising. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 really interesting. And I, I, as I started doing this analysis, I was like, I'm really interested in what's not there. That's mm. a really weird thing to try and um, spot. And it's good to get lots of brains kind of focusing on it together. Yeah. So if anyone else is in the room who would like to um, 
flag up a, a gap, please feel free to unmute or uh, write in the chat, or you can raise your hand if you want to um, form an orderly queue. That would be that would be okay too. Um, got a few things in the Google Doc, so do feel free to write into the Google Doc. Any this is a kind of collective list, just a collective um, brainstorm. Um, I think I just, um, last week I ironed quite a lot of my um, stuff at home and I just realized that I like it. Mm -hmm. It's time consuming, but I like it. And so I think this is about, it's in the, in the part of the washing. So this, um, if you care for your clothes, then it's even okay to, to iron them. I mean, the things, handkerchiefs, I iron handkerchiefs. <laughs> And I know it's stupid, but, or, yeah, or it's not stupid. In fact, it's, it's just all this time um, that we started, like, to everything has to go quick. We mm -hmm. cancel all this stuff, but actually this is, like, this slow movement. Like, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's good work to do, and we forgot that slow work is good work. Mm. Let's just say perhaps, think, perhaps something could be there. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I think there's like the there really isn't very much about washing. And I don't think there's I can't think of any that focus on just the care of clothes when it's not about mending. Like we think a lot about mending, which is like repair, like there's something wrong with it and then we fix it and it's fixed. But like maintenance, just in not just in terms of fashion, but more broadly is a kind of um, uh, unappreciated practice that it's the care for things so they don't even get if I mean if I cared for my clothes better then I probably would have fewer moth holes to try to mend yeah so it's, it's the kind of the care that comes before the mending and kind of sticks around the washing but it's not only washing is it yeah that's a really good point so yeah let's let's get that on the list it's somehow, yeah, it's somehow even to, to change your mind. I'm pretty sure that even like, I mean, okay, I agree that the washing machine was a big step forward. But on the other hand, we don't have to forget how industry is pushing us to do everything quicker. And mm -hmm. we forget that perhaps the work we all cancelled um, would be good work for us, for our well-being. And yeah. now we do the well-being otherwise instead of we do it where it could be in our daily life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a really nice one. Um, I guess I would, if Sally, maybe Sally can add these in. I, I feel like just in general, if I look at the map, I um, guess I'm kind of surprised that there isn't more about gender. Um, just thinking about kind of popular discourses much more broadly, far beyond the sustainable fashion um uh area um and i say that in a very inclusive way you know and any kind of discussion of or issues about gender um and kind of decolonization kind of discussions there are certainly um some fictions which uh address they they, they offer alternative histories of no colonization or different colonization patterns in the world um but again that's another kind of area where uh, I think the, uh, the, the frequency of them appearing in the fictions doesn't match with the, the sort of the, the currency of those discussions in, in, in life more broadly. So they, they were a couple which I kind of feel like, and I'm sure that part, it partly comes down to maybe the way that I have framed the project or facilitated things where people think that they, they, they sort of have a head that's focusing more on environmental impacts for example, whereas I do would, would really like the fictions to be um, quite expansive in terms of just how how would we like the fashion system to be different, recognising the fashion system sits within a broader economic uh, and social systems. So, yeah, lots of things that I think could be explored further. OK, I'm conscious of the time. Um, so we're going to watch another little video. Uh, which is going to explain this idea of remixing a world that we're particularly focusing on in the workshop today. So uh, let's turn our videos off again and Beth will help us with that.
There are lots of different ways that you could go about this idea of remixing. I'm just going to share one, um, one example. So I'm starting here with World 48. And in World 48, garment production from raw materials became outlawed and socially despised after text textile wastefulness was identified as a source of a major pandemic in 2020. Textile resourcefulness becomes the most highly valued social attribute. So there's talent competitions on primetime television. There's vast cash prizes given by the government for innovation. Children are trained in resourcefulness techniques at school and they stage competitions in each other's homes. Um, and then they dream of winning a Nobel, a Nobel Prize in this area when they grow up. So I'm using this uh, great fiction um, as my source material. Um, and I want to bring to this the gap that I feel is kind of underexplored in the fictions of washing. So I'm going to see what I can do to bring washing, um, kind of insert that into this existing fiction and see where that takes me. So instead of um, garment production from raw materials becoming outlawed, I'm instead saying that the premature washing of unsoiled clothing has become socially despised. So washing clothes when they're not really dirty is socially unacceptable in this world. After laundry effluent, logically, I have to change the next bit. So let's say that effluent from laundry was identified as the source of a major pandemic. I'll keep that bit. That seems to work. Um, then what do I want to change next? It won't be textile resourcefulness that becomes highly valued, but the ability to wear the same clothes indefinitely will be a really um, sought after um, thing to be able to do. Working through the fiction, I'm now thinking about what else do I need to change to kind of follow through on this idea um, of trying not to wash your clothes. Um, so the talent com competitions on television can celebrate the most socially responsible and eye catching extended wearing practices. Um, quite nice here. I don't even quite know exactly what I mean, but I'm enjoying the possibilities of the ideas. Um, and children, what would they be trained in? They're trained in textile stamina techniques at school. Again, I don't quite know what that means, but I like the idea of it. Um, and then they can still stage competitions in each other's homes. And then the, the Nobel Prize is going to need a different title, given the, the shift in the focus of this fiction. So it's going to be the Nobel Prize for stylish grubbiness uh, that the children want to win when they grow up. So there's one example of remixing a fiction. Um, my little experiment, you might uh, have a different approach, which would be wonderful. Um, you might find that you want to change only just a few words here and there in order to insert the idea that you want to add. You might find that you end up kind of rewriting the whole thing. Um, either way is completely fine. So there's no um, ideal amount of remixing or adapting. I would really encourage you to kind of um, see where the idea takes you. That's what I did with this example. OK, um, so now we're ready to think about which world or worlds you might want to remix. And there are a few ways to go about this. So in a couple of minutes, we're going to show a slideshow of worlds on the screen. So if you wanted, you could just use that like a lucky dip. You could just select the one that speaks to you. Uh, you could use the map, so that the, the map of the topics, to identify worlds that already focus on a particular topic. So you might um, say, I'd like to use a repair-based world, but I want to put a spin on it that makes it focus on some things to do with gender or decolonization or whatever. So you would go to the repair and alteration part of the map and see which world numbers it suggests. Uh, or you could go to the world's page of the website and browse through the summaries and again, kind of choose one that speaks to you. Kenny will put the link to the world's page on the website in the chat now. So if you want to use that approach, you can just click through the website and um, even treat it like a roulette. Just <laughs> give it a spin and see where you end up. Um, we will be documenting these choices in step two of the Google Doc, but not just yet. 
Um, so for now, let's just take a bit of time to browse the world and think about which one or more than one you might like to work with, um, keeping in mind the gap or gaps that you might want to address. So maybe something that you wrote in the Google Doc in step one um, or something that we've mentioned or you know somebody else has added onto that list. The idea is that we're working collectively here. So you might respond to something, the idea of ironing or the idea of gender or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, we're going to start playing a slideshow of a selection of worlds. And at the same time, we can discuss the worlds, your thoughts about which world you might want to work with, answer any questions you might have. Um, so feel free to write in the chat and we'll pick up uh, any comments there. And if you're in the room, again, feel free to unmute uh, or raise your hand and let us know what you're thinking about. So Beth is going to uh, set that slideshow playing. Um, and we can let's keep our videos on this time. That's fine because it's just kind of sitting in the background. Um, I had fun pulling out these. I always have fun pulling out the worlds to um, for any purpose. It's always nice browsing through them. And people sometimes ask me what my favorite world is, and I'm like, all of them. They're all so good. They're great as a, as a, a set of dreams. Um, so, Sally, if you were picking one here, what would you be, what would you be thinking? Well, I, yeah, I wonder about the, the ones about, the, I think there's only one that you've given an example of, of the kinship, kinship with nature. Um, idea uh, and I, I, that was the one that I thought I might be interested in exploring more which I think is world 63. Mm -hmm. um, oh here oh, it yes, is. It's just coming up now yes that was good timing. <laughs> yeah some of them are really nicely rooted in um, this one feels very rooted in the pandemic experience. Yeah, yeah and I think how that how things how things change if you change your focus on it and I uh, yeah I thought that I thought that one was particularly good for that so that was that's the one that I'd probably choose mm. anyone else want to share maybe what world they're thinking of remixing everyone's busy reading <laughs> Joe's laughing. I can see that she's it's like, yes, let me let me concentrate. Well, there's so many to choose from, aren't there, from the map? Yes. Yes. Well, I was really happy. I mean, I created the map for this event, but I was it was something I really wanted to do anyway. So I'm really glad to have had the sort of prompt to do it because it is such a huge amount of information. Um, and there are so many ideas in there. I think when I coded it, I had something like 625 topics, like specific kind of codes um, across all of the worlds. And many of them had like many codes within them. Um, yeah, it can be packed full of, of ideas. And you have another 47 worlds since you did that. Yeah, and hopefully a few more after today. Which is terrific. <laughs> This one I really like because it's kind of telling you about a specific thing and then at the end it just says capitalism is destroyed. <laughs> this is a byproduct. Yeah, just, just, I'll just mention <laughs> that at the end. Wonderful. Yeah, I think some of them probably lend themselves more to um, almost taking out one idea and putting in another, as I did with um, that textile resourcefulness one. Um, others, it might be that you kind of take the, the, the premise and then you spin it off in a slightly different way. Maybe you take a different path forward. Um, but yeah, this whole remix idea is an experiment. So we're all exploring together what, what it might mean and what it might look like. 
Yeah, I thought that about the, so I did one that was um, about sewing uh, being as common and gender neutral as learning to drive. So that's something that teenagers kind of learn as a, a kind of rite of passage. And I, I was thinking, well, you could, you could have rethought that. So I was thinking, what, what if sewing was more universal? Well, who's currently less represented in that space? Oh, so that's, that's um, men. And, and then thinking about, well, so what do we traditionally think of as kind of men's pursuits? So just asking my que- myself questions about who, who are those people and what, what might be different from them? And, and then what would that mean? So then, you know, what, what would they be doing? So, yeah, I think taking one aspect of a fiction and then asking yourself questions about who's involved or what it means can give you a different story in the second half of that. Fortunately, some roadwork people have um, rocked up outside my house, so I apologise for any um, background noise that I'm introducing. I'll, I'll try and mute in between talking to, to minimise it. Um, but we're just coming up now to it being time to firm up your decisions about which worlds you think are good to work with. Um, so we'd like you to write in the step two part uh, of the Google Doc. And you'll just post the link again in case you need it. Um, we invite you to use a row of the table under step two to record a combination of a gap and the world that you think would be good to combine. Um, so if I just share my screen to show that, I just organise my windows. Um, Yeah, so the idea is we've got some spaces here just so we can kind of show what we're working on, um, have a sense of uh, um, shared endeavour with each other. Um, so, yeah, Sally, do you have an example that we can put in just to illustrate and get us started? Yeah, so if I wasn't multitasking, I would be doing something on kinship and I'd be starting with World 63, I think. Mm. That's nice. So do you feel that World 63 already has a sense of kinship in it and you want to kind of explore that further? Yes, it's it's um yeah, it's 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 on the map as I think it's the only one that's kind of highlighted as as being about that under relationships with nature. Um yeah, yeah and I just I just think what what behaviors what 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 things would be different if we had a greater kinship with with clothes i mean would they have family trees could we write their biographies what mm-hmm. what would this kinship mm-hmm. what would this kinship be what behaviors would be different and how might that change how we think about clothes so, it's like, so is it kinship with clothes that we're or with well, nature well so kinship with nature but with clothes being a part of that relationship I mean acknowledging that clothes are you know that they come from the earth as well in some way yeah yeah definitely okay so yes everyone who's participating this is your challenge to adopt a row in this table and uh, stick in some ideas feel free to put in more than one if you have enough brain bandwidth for that. Um, sometimes people, I remember someone at, at one of these workshops managed to work on three ideas at once, which I would melt my brain, but uh, she was obviously able to do that. So yeah, jot something in there uh, when you're ready. It doesn't need to be, you won't be held to it. So uh, you're not committing yourself forever. Um, I'll give you a little bit of time to think about that. Are there any questions or anything that anyone would like to chat about, discuss, one's thinking. Uh, Amy, do you, is, do you, is there a story like about how you choose your class? How is, mm. this uh, story comes to your mind, the world? Yeah, no, I don't think so. And yeah. And about maintenance, yeah. there is only this washing. Is there is nothing else? No, no. So those are def- the, the the maintenance is definitely a gap. 
and kind of ways of choosing clothes. Sally, you wrote one where people, um, uh, it's by chance, you did throw dice or something and it gave yeah. you, that was like dressing choices about what to wear every day, wasn't it? Like Yeah, I can't dice. remember, it was, it was like one of the early fictions, but yeah, you would throw the dice, I think three times, one for kind of colour, one for the kind of garment and one for something else. And then that's how you would choose to put your outfits together. And I thought, well, that would, that would change the way we kind of judged what people wore and, you know, we wouldn't make the same set of assumptions about about what they're trying it to just, co convey. I thought it would it be just quite fun. A, just had a bad hand this morning, like an unfortunate set of numbers. Yeah, like you can on. have a bad hair day. Yeah. <laughs> All the dice didn't fall well this morning. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, other than that, I mean, it's kind of implicitly there, I suppose, In, but no, people choosing clothing. I don't, I can't think of one, so that seems like another gap. You've muted yourself, Amy. Sorry, thank you. It was because of the noise. I knew that would happen. Um, I can't remember what I said now. Something very wise. Um, <laughs> it was definitely something really wise. Uh, yeah, those are gaps. Jot them down. And if you're wondering what world to go for, you could always go for the, um, I think the roulette technique could be quite effective if you're struggling to choose, like just literally go like, woo on the on the website and give yourself one and kind of give yourself the, the, the tight challenge of trying to work out how, how to mix the two things together okay so you can still be thinking about that but it would be great if you can jot your ideas into the google doc um we're all because we're almost ready to start writing the remix fiction. So you, you will need to um, choose a combination to work with. Um, but first, we're going to show another little video. Um, and this one explains the rules of fashion fictions and a suggestion of how to structure a fiction. So this is kind of really um, the things that I say to people when they're writing a fiction from scratch. But it's good for you to kind of keep in mind as you're um, doing your remixed version. So best luck like that. Thank you. Fashion Fictions is a kind of game, and like all games, it needs some rules. The first rule is that in Fashion Fictions, we're trying to imagine contemporary realities in parallel worlds, rather than futures in our own world. So we're imagining these parallel worlds that are very like our own, but with some key differences in how people live with their clothes. And these differences are the focus of the fiction. To keep this in mind, you can imagine that you're writing an entry for a 2022 World's Guidebook. The second rule is that uh, we try as much as we can to envision positive and enticing worlds in terms of individual satisfaction, social justice and sustainability rather than the dystopias, which are quite frequently um, uh, the focus of speculative work. The third one is more of an encouragement than a rule, really. But I really encourage people to try to focus their attention on the use of clothes and the wearer's experience rather than the production of clothes, which is the focus of so much work um, in sustainable fashion. The fourth rule is that the world has to be physically possible. It has to abide by the laws of physics. Um, so you can't just have a magic wand that just solves all of the world's problems or a time machine. Um, but rule five, um, you really need to think beyond what happens or even feels plausible to you from your perspective and your experiences today. So there's a, a kind of, um, within the realms of physical possibility, but really pushing into things that feel socially and culturally, economically implausible. As you look through the existing world, you might notice one or two that don't always um, conform strictly to these rules. Some of them surge into the future. Um, some of them push at the, the bounds of physical, physical possibility. Uh, that's OK. Some bending of the rules is OK, but this is uh, what we encourage people to um, work within. Within any fiction, it's really great to try and capture two um, 
key kind of parts of the story. So one is the core idea of this fictional world and what happens there, um, making sure that you're sort of communicating the the what if that drives the fiction and also the context, um, the kind of location and scale. Is it a global system? Is it something very localised? Um, kind of just what is the everyday experience as well? And also it's great if you can build in a sense of the backstory. So an explanation for why and when the world split from our own. So you can identify a juncture, an event that caused this world to split from our own um, and think about when that happened. So you might want to, that might be something that you want to think about um, playing with when you're remixing an existing fiction. You could change the backstory, change the juncture and the timing, as well as potentially um, adapting and, and working with the fiction itself. Okay, great. So um, hopefully that was, uh, that was clear enough. Um, we're going to give you some quiet time to write. So you're now aiming to work with your, the gap that you've identified and the world that you've decided that you're going to remix. I can see things going into the, um, into the Google Doc, which is great. Um, so you're going to work with that combination and have a go at, at editing, remixing, rewriting, playing around with the words to um, insert the, that idea that you're interested in into that existing fiction. In the meantime, we're going to show a video uh, that was created in stage two of the Fashion Fictions project. Um, and I'll just say, Beth, I think it would be good actually if we ha have the sound on for this video so that we can have a bit of a um, immersive experience um, and a break from talking, um, if that's okay. I'm going to presume that's a yes. Um, if it's a bit loud, everybody, when it comes on, just turn your volume down. You might want, you might find it a bit, uh, a bit much, but just turn volume down and to the, an appropriate level. Um, so yeah, this is a, a video created in stage two of the project by a group exploring World 45. Um, and it's a world in which due to deep superstition, all textiles must be hung as curtains for a year before they can be used to make clothes. Um, and the short videos you're going to see in this compilation are elements of a ritual that surrounds this process. Um, there's a lot there, it's hard to explain briefly. So if you want to find out more, Henny will post a link in the chat. So let's turn our videos off while, while the video is playing, uh, but do feel free to ask any questions in the chat. So we've got about five minutes writing time with this abstract video um, interlude. Thanks.
So I hope that was some good um, background visuals and sounds for your writing. Um, we're going to now invite you to take a little break from writing and enjoy an insight into step three of the project. So as a reminder, at step one, we create these little fictions, these little written fictions. At stage two, we uh, create visual or material prototypes, so things that represent life in these fictional worlds, like the video that you've just seen. Um, and at stage three, we try to kind of step into the world and make it real. So we're going to show you a film that was created at a recent enactment. Um, it'll explain itself, uh, but Henny's going to put a link in the chat for an article where you'll find more information. Um, and also the, the video is in there if you'd like to watch it again. Um, okay, so please to share the World 54 video. Oh, but what if people don't get it? <laughs> yeah. I just, you know, and then I think something like this, it then frees me to say, well, you know, I can wear a twig as a brooch, why not? <laughs> like, so going to. Uh, I was coming in with a very simple style where I'm wearing a cardigan, like how a cardigan should be worn. And like I'm just like wrapping the skirt around, not like making it like look unique. Whereas like the three other people in the same world were like really like weird and like avant-garde. And they were like questioning my style of like, you know, why is it so simple? Like, you know, what is he doing? And then like we kind of like paralleled it to the real world of like, you know, since I came there like confident, they would be like, oh, there would be like something, you know, which is why he is doing that. So it kind of began, became the idea of like setting a trend. The sensory nature of having this cloth around me. Once I've got my second outfit, I'm really like to feel really comfortable. Um, I really enjoy being able to just make a statement and not worry about any rules whatsoever. If you're not wearing one, then you don't look trendy, but here you are trendy, whatever you wear. <laughs>
Okay, we're back. <coughs> Sorry, I have my road mending friends um, making noise in the background again. Um, but we have a, a few minutes where we could, it would be really nice to discuss how you're getting on. Um, yeah, and hear about how these remixes are going. So Barbara, Joe, Salome, Lexi, Liam, I don't know if you'd like to um, let us know what, you, what you're doing. Um, Just posted one. <laughs> So I, th I like the ironing idea, and I found I found one that a uh, world that, um, or at least a description that worked quite well to just replace stuff with ironing. Um, I hope you can see it in the Google Doc. I can. I'm just going to share my screen because that's really nice to share. Let's just um, put that up so we can show it. So, so what was the original? The oh god, I can remember now. Um, it was second hand clothing. And mending and making. Yeah. I like the performative ironing. Ironing performances on social media. Choreographed ironing to music. I sense that you had fun doing this, Barbara. <laughs> High street brands sell wrinkled clothes in an effort to stay relevant to young people. I like it. Public ironing booth. Local. And like, I think that's what's so nice about the remix, because like, I don't know if your brain is this inventive, Barbara, it might be. But I think I wouldn't have come up with the idea of localised trends that diverge from mainstream ironing techniques. Well, well, that was already in the... Yeah. So, the, so that yeah, bit was remixing. already in the was fiction. And then yeah. bringing ironing into it just makes like an instantly kind of really engaging um, idea. Yeah, nice remix. You're on fire, right? You can do another one. I, I, yeah, I can. I will. Keep going. I love it. Anybody else like to tell us uh, what you do? I'm not so, uh, so quick in writing, but I think I have got my idea. This is already good. So you will get it, even if you don't get it until 10 o'clock. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's so great. my idea is that um, as transparency now, everybody wants transparency. So um, you choose your class, not just because of the look and the material, but on each class, there is a book um, or a book or a journal belonging to it with the story. So the story of the class becomes so well known that you want to buy the class because of the story. Mm -hmm. so the whole story of the class is, is present and, and it's transparent from fiber to where who was wearing it and who was ironing it and so the whole story is is really transparent and you buy the class with this explanation or mm -hmm. how the movie is not yet clear so i think i will go in that direction that's nice and are you have you got a world that you're trying to put that idea an existing world that you're trying to put that idea into not yet i mean it's somehow it's about storytelling again so that would go back to my first story, uh -huh. to my first world. Yeah, the one that you've written previously. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just I'm always sinking there around. But if you know another world, tell you can mm. let me know. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to scan through my mental Rolodex of 167 <laughs> worlds. Like, oh, which one could have stories in it? There are quite a few, like story storytelling is something that comes through in quite a lot in, in very different ways. Um, yeah, I might be tempted to just like do a real random selection and just try and find one and see if you can insert. I think Barbara's was a great uh, example of, um, yeah, inserting, taking out one idea and putting another one in yeah, and yeah. Up with some unexpected combinations. So maybe just have a little play around, see if you can find one and yeah. see what it comes up with no. yeah, thank, in fact in five sharing. minutes is not possible <laughs> yeah. no no i know um but we're going to have another another five minute interlude um shortly so you can have a bit more time without people talking at you um joe i'm intrigued to know what you're working on i was working on i really like the world with signatures this idea you know that they they you know people value their work so much that they actually put their signature on and collect your signatures. I just think that's a really nice way of badges, isn't it? 
And then I was thinking about that in terms of the gender as well, and whether that would actually make things, I'm just going to make up my mind, because whether it would actually make gender more um, emphasised, if you know what I mean, or would it actually encourage the, the blending of gender so that gender became yeah. less? Yeah. And my five minutes, I was, I was kind of stuck between the two. Um, and I think, I think because at the moment there's such a move towards blended um, gender, isn't there, sort of in the broader sense, I suppose it, it felt like a more um, appropriate thing to do to make it less. And then I noticed within the description, it talked about really that it came from resistance groups. Mm -hmm. um, and I know they were resisting sort of um, material worlds, whatever, wasn't it? Um, this is committed to preserving material communities. So it would really develop, I was thinking it would develop those communities. So I was thinking rather than actually become more about gender, it become much more about um, identification um, with your community as opposed to gender. So that I was imagining that these groups of communities would be sharing. So there would be the blend. If you happen to be, I suppose, a thin man, you could get into a woman's church, you might do that. Do you know what I mean? But it'd be much more about identifying yourself with your resistance group rather than with gender. Yeah. Mm, nice. So you're kind of really enjoying an existing fiction and thinking how you can sort of focus in on a particular the kind of the gender yeah. aspect within that fiction by tweaking some of the descriptions to kind of focus in. Well, I was trying to, but yeah. I kind of got yeah, lost yeah. in the yeah. I think one thing to say that I think I haven't highlighted yet is that um, you can, when you're writing a world, like you're the author or the god, if you like to think about gods in that way, um, of the world. So if you you don't have to think necessarily like, oh, how would it go? Would it go more like this or like this in terms of gender? You can say it goes like this. Or what happens is, blah. So whatever you, when you're writing the world, whatever you say is true. And so you 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 take it in the way that you want to, to take it. Um, so you've got always got that idea of like the preferable, like what what would we like to happen? What which which way would we prefer it to go? And you can write that in. Um, and a piece of guidance that I always use at these workshops is I tend to go with whatever makes me laugh the most. So I kind of, um, when I'm like, oh, what could go here? And then my brain comes up with some kind of silly suggestion that makes me giggle. I usually put that in because I think it's really nice to inject some um, different ways of thinking and being into conversations about uh, sustainability and social justice and kind of... Um, humor and irony and um parody and things are kind of really useful modes that we don't necessarily use so much in this space so yeah that's that's one tip is what makes you giggle i think <laughs> that might might possibly be helpful um i'm just thinking about the time um i think we're doing oh i think we it's just about time yes it's time for let's we should watch We'll, we're going to put on the um, abstract video again so you can have another five minutes without us talking at you to develop your thinking about the combination that you're going to use um, or if you've done one do another one um, do stick them in the google doc as you go along it's really nice to see what you're working on um, so yeah let's have the video and we'll come back in five minutes
Okay, so we are nearly at the end. Um, it's the end of your designated writing time, or at least what we can provide you with in the workshop. Um, you are, of course, can of, of course continue after if you wish. Um, so yeah, if you've been working on something, it would be great. We invite you to um, share it in the step three section of the Google Doc. Um, if you're working on something, don't worry if it's not quite finished. Um, great if you could in, include a note of the world that you've, you've you started from which I can see uh, people are doing in there at the moment um, I think Henny will just post the google doc link again just in case especially if there's anybody watching the live stream who uh, wants to have a look at what we've been doing um, yeah so I don't know if uh, anyone's got any questions or would like to share an updated little report of what you're working on would be nice to hear um, or a reflection on this experience of kind of remixing an existing fiction I'd be interested to hear how that how that's gone um, Sally it's really nice to see them coming together isn't it oh you're on mute Sally Sorry, I was just trying to post something in the Google Doc. Yeah, it's great to see them um, uh, coming together. There's one that somebody, who's writing World 50? So that's, I think that's kind Joe. Of, that's kind of happening Joe. live. Um, yeah. I love watching a Google Doc in action. It's so nice <laughs> to see people's work. I know it can feel a bit exposing sometimes with your like, writing, you feel like people are watching, but um, it does have a nice sense of togetherness um, on the, the uh, solidarity that the whole conference is um, trying to focus on. Barbara, are you, have you been working on another one? I have, and it's, it's a very difficult task <laughs> because you might have an idea, but it won't necessarily fit the, the wording. And I got very lucky with the first one in that I could just substitute one set for another. Yeah. And I've had to take a very different approach to the one that I'm doing now. Yeah, that's interesting. And the one I'm doing now, 
I've had to edit more, but I've managed to fit it exactly into the world. So the world stays the same. And then the second bit is a bit that's editing as a result of that world. So it's like the, the introduction is the same, but then I'm thinking, well, actually, as you just, you just said, what, if you're good, anything that you, <laughs> you say goes, and as a god of this world, I would have taken this in a different direction than the first author. Yes, yes. That's that's brilliant, and that's a, that's like that part of the the idea of the whole project. So we're we're doing it. This is something I've never done before: is working off stage one fictions to try and make new stage one fictions, which just seem like an interesting task and something that we can do now that we've got so many of the original ones, that, you know, so many fictions to work with. But you know, at, when people come to a stage two workshop or do uh, a stage three thing, the idea is that they're the things are still flexible so you can kind of reinvent the world while you're prototyping it and you can take it in a different direction um and i think that's really important because it's um it's about the ideas and the preferences and the uh, dreams that the people working on that thing there have and trying to kind of use it as a way of, of bringing them out so yeah thank you for sharing the difference between those two experiences is is really interesting to hear um yeah anybody else would like to share I uh, think people might be busy writing I'm conscious of that no in fact it's for me it's it's quite tough because it's so much information and I really have to say I love your list of the topics involved mm -hmm. and I found it quite interesting to, to think about the gaps missing or where most of the topics goes and and others don't I yeah. find it very interesting and um, yeah uh I will write one, but I need more time. I can't do I, that. So. I understand. <laughs> I understand. It's nice to kind of like set aside a, a period of time where we come and do it. But yeah, sometimes you, in many cases, your uh, brains need longer to, to germinate ideas. And uh, yeah, and I just realized. I mean, I find it what you did, Barbara. It's it's great, and I just felt, oh yeah, it's you could just play with it and and go with it. But um, as as I'm 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 more like um, yeah it, it's I think it's a personal stuff as well like how you treat something like this yeah 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 so there's no right way and no wrong way so yeah of course thank you for your thank you for your energy and um, yeah I mean I really appreciate any um, those attention to the gaps so you know the the map is there I'll put it on the website as well but I mean you've got the link. Um, you know, really thinking about what gaps there are that might prompt you to write a new fiction. It doesn't have to be remixed. That was just the kind of, you know, the, the concept, concept that we were exploring for this workshop. But, you know, if you go away and you look at the map and you think oh, there really should be one about whatever, you know, it would be wonderful to receive those. Um, so I think it's just about time to show you a final video. Um, and this is an important one as it shows you how to submit your fiction to the project. So we're sharing things in the Google Doc. That's part of the workshop, kind of just sharing what we're doing. But if you want it to be um, on the website and contribute to our ongoing research, which we would very much appreciate, you need to go through the process of actually submitting it. So Beth is going to show this video. Um, thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to submit your fiction to the project. So I'll show you how to get there from the website, but we'll be posting the direct link to the form in the chat. But in case you need to find it another time, if you go to Worlds and then Contribute Your Own Fiction, and then you can just go straight to Ready to Submit, and that takes you to the submission form. Now, because Fashion Fictions is a research project, um, we need to make sure that we have uh, we're doing things ethically and so um, there's information here for you as a research participant uh, to understand how we're going to use what you will submit um, yeah everything to do with kind of how the project works and how your data will be used so please read through the information and then you need to click to say that you understand the information you understand how your fiction will be used uh, you understand that you can withdraw but the um, kind of conditions around that and you want to go ahead and then if you click next 
There's then just a few fields. So we're asking where you're located. It's really interesting for us to know where in the world contributors are, um, just in terms of the reach of the project, but also, um, you know, the different kind of cultural perspectives that people might be bringing. You're invited to, they're not essential, but you are invited to identify the central what if of your fiction, the real world issue that you're targeting and any sources of inspiration that you've used. And then you definitely need to share the 100 word outline of your world. Um, and yeah, that's the main the main thing that you're, you're adding. Um, and if you, as you are likely to have done in this workshop, based your fiction on an existing world, um, please tell us which world that is. And we want to do that so that we can give credit to the author or authors of the original fiction, as well as you, when we add the, um, the fiction to the website. So you would write like world 56 or whatever there. Um, you agree to apply a Creative Commons license, and that's a condition of everything that's submitted to the project. So it becomes this kind of open and adaptable resource. Um, you can choose whether you want to be named or anonymized. Um, you do need to give your name and your email address just so that we can um, send you the uh, confirmation of what you've submitted, whether you choose to be named or anonymized. Um, you can choose to opt into the mailing list. Um, tell us where you hear, heard about us. Um, and then if you created it at this workshop, which you have done, we'd be really pleased to receive any feedback um, on the workshop itself and what the experience of writing the fiction might have, um, might have, how that might have impacted your thinking about the real world kind of fashion system. That'd be really valuable for us to know. Okay, so I hope that's all clear. Um, Henny will post the link to the submission form in the chat now, um, and it's also in the Google Doc. And I also showed you how to find it via the website. So hopefully three versions is, uh, is good. Um, and yeah, I really do encourage you to submit. Uh, I found that people generally do it kind of straight after a workshop while their head's still in it and they finish it up and submit it, or quite often not at all because it fades away into the long to-do list that I'm sure other people have as well as me. And I would be just as guilty of that um, myself if I was participating in someone else's workshop. So I would encourage you to try to, while well, you've got your head in it, whether that is in the next 10 minutes or in the next day, if you're able to keep your head there, um, try to submit it then. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect really just getting your ideas into this kind of collective pile of fictions is the important thing. It's so good to, to get the, the thoughts and the ideas there. Um, if anyone has been watching but haven't been able to have a go at actually creating or remixing a fiction, maybe they've been busy doing other, other things, um, I encourage you to use the Contributor World Guide that's on the website. So there's a whole guide that takes you through the process of writing a fiction. So it's not focused on this remixing idea, although you could apply that if you wanted to, but it takes you through all of the steps of writing a fiction and submitting it. Um, and Henny will put the link to that in the chat um, if you wanted to have a go. Um, if you would like to be involved in the project any further, we would welcome you with open arms. Uh, if you go to the main website, We'll put that link in the chat as well, just to give you everything. Um, on the homepage, there's a mailing list that I've just properly set up. Um, so you can sign up to receive occasional updates on activities and workshops. And there will be um, more of these, uh, these kind of things coming up. Uh, there's a series of, um, of three prototyping workshops in mid-August that will be online, open to all. Uh, so three consecutive days, an hour and a half each time, where we're taking the experience of a kind of yeah, prototyping um, challenge. So the stage two of the project that I've previously done in person, and we're taking that online to hopefully um, invite and welcome uh, as many people as would like to join in. Um, um, there's also a, there's a page called join in on the website uh, that has details of all of the ways that you can get involved kind of together in one place. 
So it's just about time to wrap up, but we just have a couple of minutes. Don't know if anyone's got any final reflections or uh, comments, how it felt. Um, if you enjoyed stepping into these fictional worlds for a, a little while, a little bit of the morning. Yeah, but I enjoyed a lot and I will, I'm quite curious to hear more about your project. It's really lovely. Mm. And I leave you now because I go to the conference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you get to go to the real life thing. Well, uh, yeah. Hope it goes well. Have a, have a good day. <laughs> Thanks. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. So, Sally, that's been a good, um, good almost 90 minutes of um, world focusing, which is always yeah. good fun. Yeah, I almost got, I got halfway through one myself in, okay, in the two nice. five minutes slots. Okay, um, what were you doing? So I was doing the World 63, the, uh, the uh, um, kinship uh, one, and I've shifted it to the UK, but I've only done the first half, and I'm really looking forward to thinking about what the consequences what I've written might be. <laughs> yeah. So it's in the Google Doc. I can see. And Barbara, is this World 62 one? Is that yours? Um, well, let me see. Uh, yes, that was mine. Yeah, that nice. was the one where I, I felt the, the first two sentences could be left exactly as they were. Yeah. And then I just took them in a different direction. That's interesting, isn't it? And that, that's a, a world that we've taken all the way into stage three there's a stage three kind of okay. thing going on of the original world 62 at the moment where we're doing a quite complicated kind of round robin um fashion game where we're posting garments to each other and writing descriptions but no one's allowed to see any pictures of them so then when it arrives it's a really interesting but, idea isn't it that, yeah yeah no images of garments yeah um, and how you use language and always in every single everything to do with fashion fiction is always people talking about black markets and trying to get around the rules which I think says something about uh, human nature that we're always keen to like see how we can get around these these things um but yeah I really like the direction that you're taking your remixed version in um kind of targeted adverts yeah nice idea excellent so couple from you thank you Barbara um don't know if anybody else we do have to finish very shortly um any final comments Jo looks like she's still concentrating on writing <laughs> which is good that's a good that's a good thing to be doing uh, it took me a while to get my, my brain around it really I have to be honest and what you're thinking I think it's 7 30 in the morning well no so thank you for thank you for your efforts it uh no, it's really interesting, and it's and it's not really an area that I work in either. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's, it's it did take a while to get my brain. I kind of think I'm on on a roll. So I should carry on. <laughs> Excellent. Please do. Yeah, on a roll is definitely good. Okay, so I think we can wrap up. Um, so yes, just time to say thank you very much for coming. Um, to those in the room, thanks to anyone watching on the live stream. Um, thanks to the team, to Sally, Beth, and Henny for doing all of the things that made things happen um, behind the scenes. Um, thank you to the conference team for hosting the workshop um, and the whole live stream experience has been quite amazing. Um, and we hope that the in-person day of the conference goes really well. So yeah, all done from us. Mm.